Welcome to 21st Century Health. I'm Jackie Bales. As new health care legislation takes effect, providers are given incentives to reduce health care costs while achieving better outcomes. And in this new world, telemedicine offers some real advantages. To learn how telemedicine can benefit providers and patients, especially in long-term care, we're joined by Phil McNulty, Chief Financial Officer and Chief Operating Officer of Pro Connections. Welcome, Phil. Thank you, Jackie, and I'm delighted to be here. What issues in the long-term care industry are really driving the changes in health care? Well, I think critically right now it's the escalating cost of providing health care to long-term care patients. I think it's second is the, the coordination of benefits between the various providers, between the facility, the hospital, as well as the physician. And third, and most importantly, I think, is it having access to specialists. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think telehealth helps us provide and meet all three of those. Hmm. So tell us about Pro Connections, Phil, who you are and what you actually are offering in telemedicine to help address this. Pro Connections is a privately owned custom solutions company that specializes in audio video technology. Uh, started the company about 10 years ago with a focus on manufacturing. However, mm -hmm. in our efforts to, to find new customers and new opportunities, our salespeople found an opportunity in the telehealth industry for a client that provided ICU room monitoring. Hmm. but needed an audio video component of their product that, uh, that met their needs in an affordable fashion. We took the challenge, developed a package. It became the forefront of our products that we now develop for our telehealth industry. Very interesting. Well, let's see how this telemedicine solution works in the real world in this 21st Century Health Field Report. The ability to maintain a high level of quality care for patients can be greatly impacted by many factors. Pro Connections Telemedicine Solution offers solutions to meet the changing demands affecting the medical industry. Benefits for the t uh, to the patient is that you know, we're able to access the patient uh, remotely right away. We're able to um, uh, treat them uh, right from uh, where we happen to be at the time. There's no waiting for a physician to arrive uh, and, uh, and see the patient. Uh, we're able to access these patients uh, through high definition technology. Uh, and get a good look at them. We're able to listen to the heart, listen to the lungs, um, look at them very closely, look at their wounds um, with the telemedicine camera. We're also able to treat these patients much faster, get them on antibiotics, um, uh, and figure out what needs to be done um, much quicker. The patient also won't uh, miss their medications while they're uh, going to the hospital. Um, they feel more comfortable in their own surroundings at the nursing home. The family is also very happy because they're able to see their loved ones uh, regularly um, and be, uh, have access to the, uh, the patient's physician immediately while they're at the nursing home. The ProMCS 2000 offers an affordable option for healthcare providers to quickly assess medical issues and provide treatment and gain access to specialists over the internet from anywhere in the world. Improve the quality and consistency of patient care, provide post-acute care on-site, and decrease hospitalization readmissions, and improve regulatory compliance. Phil, the Affordable Care Act, or ACA, is funneling money to test new models of care delivery. What are the programs that are currently being funded that will affect the long-term care industry? Well, one of them is the, uh, through the Affordable Care Act and through Medicare, other insurance providers, and, and other medical providers, they've formed organizations called ACOs. These, these accountable care organizations have been charged with identifying a model that identifies how to provide the care to patients, both in long-term care and others, while maintaining a, an effective cost structure and identifying a, a benefits plan. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, we know that, you know, that that is such an expensive type of care, so it's obvious why they're trying to focus on that. How do you believe telemedicine is going to transform patient care within the long-term care industry? Well, I, I believe telemedicine in and of itself, and we believe it, uh, that provides the easy access and, and uh, cost-effective access to both the physicians as well as the specialists, as I mentioned before, to provide more effective care. Uh, it also provides, and particularly in the long-term care facilities, uh, the after-hours coverage capability that they presently don't have. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest challenge right now and the highest increasing cost that long care is facing right now is hospital readmissions. Mm -hmm. When a patient uh, after hours is coming down with a, either has a fall or has uh, some reaction to some medications, 
generally the practitioner in the facility is talking to the doctor on the phone and to be cautious they're putting the patient in the ambulance and back to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Telemedicine gives that doctor the tools to better diagnose the situation, make a determination whether to treat or transport, transport that patient mm -hmm. within the facility. Again, saving money. And the person who is helping the patient on the other end in the patient's room, what kind of qualifications do they need? It's well, generally, they're, they're obviously a medical professional in a sense, either a, a nurse practitioner, a registered nurse, a PA. It could be anybody that within the uh, health care facility, the long-term care facility, uh, hmm. providing that after hours coverage of those and, patients. And so through the camera, the microphone, the special stethoscope, the doctor is really seeing the patient, even though they're obviously not in the same room. The doctor's seeing the patient, the patient's seeing the doctor. And that's the important part. You get a sense of comfort. You know you, your, your doctor is asking you the questions. The doctor has the opportunity of hearing your heart, your abdomen through a stethoscope. So they're getting some real-time information, as if they were there. Uh, this technology really helps physicians because we're able to uh, access our uh, patients uh, remotely when we're not able to get to the uh, nursing home. By uh, being able to access these uh, patients, we're able to determine what's going on with them and possibly prevent uh, uh, readmissions to the hospital uh, as well as uh, take care of them much, uh, much quicker, much sooner through video technology uh, available to us. What background does your company have in the field of telemedicine itself? Our largest customer is a, is a client who offers an ICU room monitoring solution. Uh, we provide the audio video technology. Their product provides the medical telemetry. But they're monitoring ICU rooms from a remote core, mm -hmm. 100, 200 miles away. Hmm. It's our in, it was our introduction, and quite frankly, into the world of telehealth. We took that core technology from an audio video component and identified opportunities spe specifically today within the skilled nursing market mm -hmm. to be able to provide that medical consultation capability from a remote user-friendly environment for the doctor. Hmm. Now we just saw the Pro MCS 2000. What features does a telemedicine solution like that have that would provide the physician with the ability to offer a better level of care to the patient? The Pro MCS 2000 solution is really a twofold solution. Number one, it is the appliance that resides with the patient in the skilled nursing facility, which is a, you know, a monitor, a camera, or a speaker, or a microphone, as well as an audio video server. The other component of the product is a client piece of software uh, called the client viewer. That resides on the doctor's laptop or their desktop computer provides them access to that appliance within the, in front of the patient, mm -hmm. gives them control of the camera to be able to zoom in and, and as well as the volumes to be able to talk to it. The Pro MCS also provides secondary audio and video channels. One of the audio channels used typically for an electronic stethoscope where the attending nurse in the facility is again uh, utilizing that stethoscope uh, with the patient so the doctor can hear what's going on. Uh, hmm. whether it be the abdomen, whether it be the heart, whether it be the lungs. The video channel provides a, a video otoscope. Uh, check your eyes, your throat, your nose. Again, having all that information available just as if that patient was in front of them. Amazing. How would this healthcare model impact a patient's level of care? Why is this good for the patient? Well, I think it's twofold. Number one, it gives them a level of comfort knowing they can see their doctor instead of getting a, a transmission of a communication from a, from a, a nurse mm -hmm. over the phone. A uh, second is access to specialists in the case need be. A specialist can log in and be able to evaluate that patient as well for a particular situation or a particular reaction. Um, and third, it's just it's, it's overall uh, comfort and security. So it's just so much easier. They don't have to get up and be transported somewhere. Correct. What about the patient's family? How well, will they benefit? Well, I think from a patient's family point of view, you get a level of comfort yourself that you know your loved one is being taken care of with the best technology available. And they're not putting through the trauma of back and forth to the hospital or, or what have you, that they're getting real-time care. Benefits for the patient is that we're also able to prevent the patients from having to go to a hospital uh, and wait uh, countless hours before being seen. Uh, there's less risk of uh, uh, getting uh, ulcers and things like that sitting on a a hard stretcher for prolonged periods of time. Um, there's less chance of getting infections when they're at the hospital uh, as well. We're also able to uh, prevent the ambulance ride, uh, which is sometimes very um, distressful for the patient. What are the benefits to the physician to use a telemedicine solution when treating critically ill patients? 
Well, I think clearly it, that number one gives them the convenience of being able to see their patient uh, anytime uh, without having to travel or without having the patient to travel to see them. It provides them easy access for follow-up with uh, their patient based on their, their uh, treatment plans and, and how are they reacting. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, overall, it's just checking in on their patients. Mm -hmm. And the healthcare facility or the healthcare organization itself, what are the benefits for them? Well, today, uh, in particular with uh, with the long-term care facility, um, generally the uh, the patient they're receiving revenues from the insurance provider, whether it be Medicare or, or insurance company, and a X payment. Uh, when those patients are transported to the hospital, that revenue stream moves from the facility to the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, Quite frankly, generally the, the average is five to eight days that bed is usually vacant. Oh, they have to keep that bed available for their patient to come back to the long term. Or, or quite frankly, another patient coming in to go in there. So the average, the average that we've identified is about $500 a day that bed is worth from a revenue stream to that facility. Hmm. So if it's five to eight days, it's substantial money, mm -hmm. uh, $2,500 to, to $4,000 worth of revenue. Mm -hmm. that they're missing the opportunity on. Second is it if effectively improves their overall call cost to deliver service, uh, leveraging the doctors to be able to monitor from their home instead of paying high price of getting them either on site or to travel to get to see the patient. They can see much more, many more patients uh, through the process, so it's a much more cost-effective delivery of medical coverage. By preventing uh, readmissions to the hospital, uh, we're able to keep the patients in the bed longer uh, so that uh, we don't lose uh, the benefits of having the patient stay at the um, facility as opposed to uh, going to the hospital uh, and being admitted. This can uh, result in substantial savings for the facility uh, because the beds don't go empty. What kind of reaction are you hearing from the doctors? Uh, very positive, quite frankly. Um, and uh, I think that uh, for those who identify or aren't afraid of technology, we're getting some very positive response. Many of them obviously want to see how it works. Uh, they're very concerned about the cost of the technology. Mm -hmm. uh, but so the magic for us is to delivering a cost-effective solution. Phil, in what other areas of telehealth are you also making inroads? Well, I think there are certainly uh, several other areas that are including uh, our prison systems. Uh -huh. uh, providing health care coverage to our prison prisoners uh, in our correctional facilities is a very costly exercise. Mm -hmm. Utilizing the technology and telehealth to be able to treat, diagnose uh, uh, prisoners uh, and keep them within the facilities rather than transporting them to a hospital with armed guards and, and so on and so forth is a very efficient way. Right. Um, I think next is telepsychiatry. Um, hmm. where uh, you don't need the peripheral equipment, the, you know, the uh, stethoscope and the otoscope, but just a medical teleconferencing system allowing you to talk with a patient remotely and help them through their difficult times. Mm -hmm. So those are two other areas we've been focusing on today because we believe there are real benefits today. The entire medical industry is wide open for the future as things change and as laws change. Wow. You know, I, I've heard of of telepsychiatry with a telephone yeah. and that that is very beneficial. But you can see where it would even be more helpful to be able to see the patient, see oh. what condition they're in. Absolutely. Hmm. Now, back to the ACA, as that evolves, what type of health care issues have to be addressed by long-term care facilities to remain in a viable business? Well, I think uh, particularly one of the critical items, and uh, there are many in the ACA, but one of the critical items is this issue about hospital readmissions. Um, it is clear that the uh, future is identified as being the, the highest growth cost uh, for Medicare in and of itself. Hmm. Uh, there are right now the statistics say that between 23 and 25 percent of rehab patients going to long-term care facilities for rehab subacute care are being rehospitalized within 30 days. Oh, wow. Uh, which is in a tremendous cost. Uh, uh, the, the Affordable Care Act is looking for that to be brought back. They're trying to provide incentives mm -hmm. as well as penalties if you don't meet certain objectives uh, to get that down to half. So if you have too many readmissions to a hospital, the long-term care facility could pay a penalty. Or the hospital. Or the hospital. Or the hospital. Uh, well, because they could, released them and, too soon, maybe. And it could be upwards of 3% of the total Medicare payments that have been paid over the last year. And how does telemedicine solve that issue? Well, we believe, again, being able to treat or to diagnose the patient 
at the facility and make the core determination not to readmit them because of the ability to properly diagnose the situation and have a comfort level in the form of treatment will help reduce that dramatically. I think then additional coordination with the ACOs between the hospitals, the long-term care facilities, and the physicians, as well as the insurance providers to come up with programs, models, of how to provide the overall care for that patient long-term will mm. help improve that as well. What does the future look like for organizations that embrace telemedicine in long-term care facilities versus those that do not? I think you've got to look at long-term care facilities today as a business. And quite frankly, if that business isn't taking all of the advantage of technology to improve the delivery of services to their customer, increase their revenue stream, manage their costs, and basically provide a competitive advantage, they're going to miss the boat. Well, Phil, you've made some really good points about the value of telemedicine, both to patients and the providers. Thank you for sharing the details with us. Thank you very much, Jackie. And thank you for watching. For 21st Century Health, I'm Jackie Bales.